Hey everybody, Eric Wagner here with my first video. This video, and actually it's gonna be a part of a series, is gonna focus on how we can use the ArcGIS platform to create some really awesome inspection workflows. So this first one is gonna focus on how we lay the foundation for it. But before we get into laying the foundation, it might actually be important to understand where this is actually going to go. When you think about the inspection process, you know, there's someone out in the field who's maybe doing something now currently on paper, we're gonna make that digital. Uh, maybe there's a manager back at the office who wants to understand progress. We're going to take a look at how we can build that as well. So across a series of videos here, we're going to build out the, the foundation and then some of the other applications on top of it that's going to allow us to create a nice, really smooth and informative inspection workflow process. So, you know, here we can see on the screen, you know, an example of a dashboard that maybe a manager might use to understand uh, which hydrants have or haven't been inspected and how many um, are we've done and how many are still remaining, 890 out of 1,400. But also, you know, giving this uh, power to guys out in the field as well, that they can see that same information on their mobile device, as well as go into any particular asset and actually perform uh, an inspection against it. So that's what we're going to do across a series of videos. So that way it's, you know, not one long, tedious video, but rather a series of, uh, I don't know, short, tedious videos, I guess. Let's go ahead and let's get started. Here we go. ArcGIS Pro. This is where it's going to begin for us. And in my case here, I just have a very simple data set of my fire hydrants. And what I need to do in order to make this the best workflow possible is I want to create what's known as a related table. So all the information about my fire hydrants is going to exist in this fire hydrants point layer that I have in my file geo database. But the inspection information, the stuff that changes every time we go out into the field, that's going to exist in a separate table. So what we'll be able to do is for any fire hydrant, we'll be able to tap on it out in the field enter in new inspection records, as well as see all the historical ones as well. So let's go ahead and jump into it and, and see what we need to do to make this happen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is within my hydrants layer, I'm gonna quickly take a look at the fields that are within it. And I recommend you do the same as well, because what you will need is you'll need what's known as a global ID field. And I can see I have a global ID field right here. That's great. In the event that you don't have a global ID field in the layer that you want to inspect those hydrants, valves, manholes, etc., you can just simply right click on your layer in the geo database, go down to manage and choose add global IDs. And that'll take care of the process for you. So once you've gotten global IDs in your parent layer, that's what we're going to call this the, the parent because it'll have a series of child inspection records. What I want to do is I want to create that table that's going to hold on to that inspection information. So I'm going to right click on my default geo database here. That is to say the same geo database that is holding the hydrants layer, the thing that needs to be inspected. I'll right click, I'll say new and create a new table. So now it's going to ask me some questions about this. Well, the first thing the table needs is a name. So we'll say uh, hydrants inspections can't have any spaces in the name. I'll move on to next. Now, this is all the questions that are going to be asked every time you go out and do an inspection. Feel free to add whatever fields you want here. So maybe something I might have uh, inspection date, and I'll make this be a date field. And uh, we'll add a field for the inspector. We leave that as a text field. And then I'll add in a field for pressure. And I'll make this a numeric field. And double will allow me to enter in decimal places as well. All right. Great, I've got all the fields that I wanna add. Feel free to add as many as you need. What I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna add in another global ID field here. This time it's going to be on this table that we're creating. And I'm just gonna set the type here to be global ID. And then there's one other field I need to add. This is known as a GUID field or a GUID field. I'm gonna to click to add a new field. I'm gonna call it GUID, G-U-I-D. And I'm gonna set the type of field to be GUID. And with that, I'll click finish. So what do I have now? Well, now I have uh, my hydrants point layer. I have my table that's going to hold the inspections. And that's it. Now I'm going to link the two of them together using what's known as a relationship class. So if I right click on the, the geo database, go into new and choose relationship class, it'll bring me to this tool here. And this does require a standard license of ArcGIS Pro to work with. But once I have this set up, I'll make my origin table be the thing we're inspecting, my hydrants. 
and I'll make the destination table be that table that's going to hold the inspection records. I'll skip down to cardinality. I'll make this one to many. That just simply means that one hydrant or one asset can have multiple inspections associated with it. I'll set the origin primary key to be the global ID. And I'll set the origin foreign key not to be global ID, but I'll set it to be that GUID field that we created. And then I'll go ahead and press run. So at this point now, we have our layer for hydrants, we have our, layer, our table for inspections, and we have this thing here, these two boxes with arrows, this relationship class that, that bind the two of them together. At which point now, I'm ready to take this and publish it or push it up into ArcGIS online. So what I'll do is, uh, first and foremost, I'll make sure I'm logged in here in the upper right hand corner, I can see I'm logged in. And then I'll click on the Share tab. And I have the ability then to take my data here and share it out as a web layer. So I'll choose web layer and publish web layer. And then it'll walk me through a little form here on the right hand side to publish this. So what do I need? Well, I need a name here. We'll call this uh, Hydrant Inspections. I need a summary and tags in here just to make this easy. Copy and paste. And I highly recommend storing your data in ArcGIS Online in folders helps keep it organized. So I'll just make this a uh, hydrants demo. I'm not going to share it with anybody just quite yet because I'm still in the testing phase. I want to make sure I'm happy with it before I let others have access to it. I'll click on the configuration tab up at the top and click on the pencil next to feature because I'm going to want to let people do some editing with this, whether it's collecting new hydrants out in the field or performing inspections. So I'll check that box. Once I'm done, I'll click analyze to make sure there aren't any errors. Now it's giving me two warnings here. Um, and that's just simply for my base map layers, the topographic map and base map. I'm going to skip past those. I'm going to ignore them. And I'm going to press the publish button. This will take a couple seconds, but it's going to take our layers, our relationship classes, and it's going to push them up into ArcGIS online. Now, one thing to be aware of is that before pressing the publish button, you need to make sure the table and the layer are both present in the map. So if I would have forgotten to have added hydrant inspections there, that would be a problem. So make sure you have those layers in the map before you press publish. And with that down here, now I can see that we're done. The process went through. So I'll click manage the web layer. This will kick me into my ArcGIS Online organization, potentially asking me to log in if necessary. And here we go, hydrant inspections. I can see I have my hydrants layer and that I have my hydrant inspections table in there as well. So we've gone through, we've taken our data, uh, we added a related table, and we pushed it into ArcGIS Online. In our next video, what we'll do is we'll take a look at how we can clean this up, add in a little bit of symbolization. So look forward to the next video. Please join me. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.